the population and economic growth sliders. These two sliders located in the middle of the inroads control panel represent two of the underlying drivers of greenhouse gas net emissions. And the way it works is, well, you have more people, they demand more energy, and that drives up greenhouse gas emissions in a fossil fuel dependent economy. Similarly, economic growth. The more people consume things, the more that consumption needs to be powered by all different sources of energy. And when we rely on fossil fuels, which are a major source of carbon dioxide, uh, that drives up our greenhouse gas emissions and leads to climate change. Um, so, but as we think about these two sliders, we're, we're somewhat limited in our ability to just magically adjust them one way or the other, um, particularly in the real world. But, and here within En-ROADS, um, we've added them to the interface so that you can test different what if scenarios, but keep in mind too, how this actually plays out in the real world. And also, you know, keep in mind too, the ethical considerations uh, that surround particularly population uh, when we think about what it means to address them. Um, so the population slider itself, I'll go into the advanced view here. Um, what it is, is it, it's a di different tr scenarios of population growth based on the United Nations population's growth scenarios. So our status quo, our middle, middle baseline scenario that we have is the UN's medium growth projection. Um, when we move the slider to the far right end to see high population growth, what that is, is the high end of the UN's 95% confidence interval uh, in terms of population growth. Similarly, if we move the slider to the far left side, that's the bottom of the U United Nations 95% confidence interval in terms of what they think uh, population growth could look like. And, you know, what are some of these factors that might change the population growth scenario for the world? Well, it's things like access to, to education, particularly for women. Also access to family planning resources and also just um, global wealth, how um, well off women are in particular and uh, their ability to choose um, how many kids they want to have and um, and all those different kinds of things that get wrapped up into what global fertility looks like. Um, and when you change this, you know, notice what happens again, as I maybe say we have a lower growth scenario. What's going on here, um, and I'll replay the change just so you can see what's going on. Pay attention to the top level of this line here. What this top level of all of the sources of primary energy added up is showing us our energy demand. And as we adjust this, uh, the replay the change, you see a lower growth population growth scenario brings uh, that energy demand slightly down. That leads to fewer greenhouse gas net emissions and slightly less temperature change. Over here, notice the greenhouse gas and net, net emissions. Where do we see the change? We see it in the second half of the century. It takes a while for these changes to play out. Um, so it's not you know, one of these uh, ways in which we might address climate change quite rapidly, um, such that just shutting down coal plants or something, some might have a more near-term effect. That's something to keep in mind too, as you talk about the dynamics of population. As we look over here to economic growth, um, keep in mind that the, like population, what we're doing is using other scenarios. So for gross world product, what, we're, what we've done is we've looked at the World Bank's development indicators and what their projections uh, for economic growth are. And we've looked at the IPCC's, specifically their socioeconomic scenarios, uh, SSP2 in particular, which is called their middle of the road approach. Um, and said, okay, well, what if this was the outlook for um, economic growth in inroads? And then what that results in is that in the near term, we're growing at 2.5% per year. Um, but further out, all of the economic growth rates of all the different regions of the world, they, could, they eventually converge towards 1.5% per year. And that's what you're adjusting when you're adjusting the main slider on the interface. You're adjusting long-term economic growth measured in GDP per person, percent per year. So you could say, increase that and say, well, what if economic growth um, continues to stay high and is growing much faster? And you can see, let me replay that change in case you didn't see that. Um, over here, our energy demand goes up, greenhouse gas emissions go up, and that results 
and more temperature change. Again, this isn't a scenario in which we have taken no other action. If we are successful in decarbonizing um, where we get our energy from and we're more dependent on clean energy sources, then the impact of increased economic growth is not going to have the same impact on temperature change. So think again about how these different sliders um, work uh, with each other and are interrelated. Uh, that's that's an important thing there. Um, in the advanced view here, you'll see you can also adjust other other factors. You can set you can adjust the near term economic growth rate and also the time in which it takes us to converge on that long term economic growth rate. So instead of uh, it taking a, over the course of many many decades, you could say I want uh, the near term economic gro growth rate to converge on the long term economic growth rate much sooner. Note um, that currently we don't have a way of testing um, short-term economic crises within inroads, um, but uh, that might be a future that we a feature that we add in, sometime down the road. I hope that helps in uh, framing your discussions about uh, growth within inroads and these two underlying drivers of, of greenhouse gas emissions. Thanks.